All right, so today we're going to start working on vectors. We're gonna learn what they are, and then we're going to learn today to prove if they're equivalent to each other or if they're not equivalent to each other. So there's a lot of vocabulary here, so clue into that. Uh, your assignment will have a lot of vocabulary, so make sure you are keeping good notes when I'm explaining all of these terms. All right, so um, the topic's vector basics. Today's objective, learn vector terms and, and the notation for vectors. And also you're gonna to show today that vectors are equivalent. Your homework, sometimes you'll show that they're not equivalent, but you use the same formula to show they're equivalent or not equivalent. So you can certainly use your brain to make that determination. All right, so um, we've been doing a lot of math this year and, and we will find scalar measures what is a scalar? A scalar is a quantity which does not depend on direction. Like I say, okay, so he's running four miles. Well, he's probably should run faster than that. Six miles per hour. That's a scalar quantity because it doesn't tell us which direction he's running. It just says this is the speed that he's running. So speed is a scalar. Uh, so we could say, as an example, speed is a scalar, um, time is a scalar, you know, been 1.2 hours or something like that. And then sometimes length or distance. These are all scalar, typical scalar measures or scalars, okay? The scalars, you have vectors, they're things, okay? So those are some examples of a scalar, all right? A vector a vector is a directed line segment. Now directed, what does that mean? It tells you which direction that the scalar or the, um, yeah, the scalar is going. What direction is it going or how is it moving? Okay, so it's a directed line segment and line segment means that it's measurable. We can give the scalar value. So the direction and the measure. Okay, so it's a quantity having magnitude. Magnitude is just a fancy word for its size. You know, it has a great magnitude, it has a tiny magnitude, or its length or its uh, measure, as well as direction. Okay, so we have magnitude. So we're talking about vectors. I'll say, what's its magnitude? Uh, that means I want to know what's its size, um, as well as its direction. So you're going to say, well what, well, what direction is it going? Well, it's going north 20 degrees west or something like that. All right. Especially when you're determining a position of one point in space relative to another. So here we have an example of a vector. And I'm just going to name a couple things here. So this is what we call the initial point of a vector. So we could call this point A. This is the initial point, And this over here is... The arrow is telling you which direction it's going. So there's the direction. So it's going to the right and it's going down. So vector A, this is point B. So this is the distance of it here. This is its magnitude right here. Okay, so it has say a length of five meters or whatever. That's its magnitude and then its direction is to the right and down. We call vector B or point B the terminal point. Okay, so this could be vector AB. It's a vector, you see the arrow, that's the vector part of it. And AB's magnitude is the length of that line segment. Okay, um, so you have the initial point and the terminal point. But a lot of times in, in physics and in other courses, you'll hear this uh, point here, instead of being called the initial point, I'll change colors here, also could be called the tail of the vector. And then instead of a terminal point, it could be called the head of the vector. Sometimes they'll call it the tip of the vector. Okay, so tail and head. And those are interchangeable terms, in, in initial point or tail and terminal point and head. Also, sometimes vectors, instead of being named by their endpoints, they'll be named by a bold-faced lowercase letter. And the most famous ones are usually like the letter U and the letter V and the letter W. Okay, some examples of vectors. Um, let's just do a, a, a velocity vector, which would be like five miles per hour to the east. So five miles per hour, that's the magnitude, and east is the direction. Or it takes 115 pounds uh, to pull something up. So you have 115 pounds being the magnitude and 
this is an example of force. It takes 115 pounds of force to pull something up. Up is the direction, obviously. Okay, so some vector notation. What does it look like if I want to describe vector AB as we have drawn over here? Okay, so what you do is you draw a little line with an arrow like that. And you put the initial point on the left side and the terminal point on the right side where the little arrow is. That's vector B. I could also call this... I'm going to try to make a bold, bold face U here, um, vector U. Um, but if you're going to name a vector with one letter, lowercase, it has to be bold face, lowercase U, V, and W. And typically they're not italicized when you read them either. So, um, and by the way, these AB should not be bold face. So I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. So vector notation, you'll see the little vector symbol above the initial point to the terminal point, or you'll just see the letter U in bold or the letter V in bold, letter W in bold, like that, okay? So a bold face lowercase vector, or this little line with the arrow on it is the vector notation. All right, magnitude refers to quantity, how much, or um, distance, how far. All right, um, some examples could be uh, 10 seconds. That's a quantity, uh, 15 miles per hour. Uh, 100 newtons. Okay, that's some force. All right, so those are examples of magnitude. And the formula that you use is the distance between point A and point B. So the distance formula just says that you take the x from your point A, subtract the x from your point B, quantity squared, and then you take add, and then your um, your y from point A minus your y from point B. You guys know the distance formula. You could also do, um, and by the way, when you see the absolute value symbol around um, vector AB, that says mad the magnitude of vector AB. So we can write that. So it says the magnitude of vector AB. That's what the absolute values around that are saying. I don't care what direction you're going. I just want to know what's its absolute value. What is its distance? What is its length? Okay, you can do that. Or sometimes you could use the um, the Pythagorean theorem. If you scratch, you know, Pythagorean theorem and the distance formula, they are the same thing. So if you have vector a, B, quantity squared, that would be A squared plus B squared equals your vector squared, which would be your A, B squared or C squared. So you could use your Pythagorean theorem if that's your preference. All right, direction is the course along which something travels. Okay, um, so a lot of times you could uh, be looking at, for example, you're going northwest. Okay, by the way, if you're going northwest, let's just sketch a little thing here. Here's north. Here's west, here's east, and here's south. Okay, if I'm going northwest, if I say go northwest, that means I want you to go directly between them at 45 degrees between them. Okay, if I tell you that we're going to go um, south 20 degrees east, that means that we're going to start at south and we're going to rotate 20 degrees towards east. So this measure right here would be 20 degrees, and this measure here would be 70 degrees. Okay, so I uh, just zoom in there. That looks really terrible. We don't have a lot of space. So this would be 20 degrees here. So that would be south, 20 degrees east. You could also say um, left, right, up, down, of course. Those are directions. Um, you can also say 30 degrees um, from the horizontal or from the vertical, etc. There's lots of ways that you can describe direction. Okay, slope. Uh, so basically you're looking at the slope of point AB. There's a formula that you could use. I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way here. So what that looks like, and, and but it is important. It is important that you start with your terminal point and you subtract your, your, I'm sorry, you start with your initial point. Let me say that again. You start with your initial point. So that would be point A. So remember, it's rise over run. 
So it's the change in y over the change in x. So your y sub a minus your y sub b over your x sub a over your x minus your x sub b. So that, that could give you your direction if you're on a coordinate plane and you're trying to find the direction of a vector, you would use the slope formula. But again, critical that you start with the initial point and then you finish with the terminal point because you want to make sure you're going the right direction. You don't want to be going up and to the right when you should be going down and to the left. All right, so there's direction. Equivalent vectors are vectors that have the same length and the same direction. And so we call them equivalent vectors. So you can see here to the right that these all <coughs> seem to look like equivalent vectors. And let's just be really clear here that maybe I have a vector going like this. And I have a vector that's exactly the same length, but it's going like that. And this will be vector u and this will be vector and I'm going to put the little vector symbol because I don't want to draw the bold face. Okay, vector um, u and vector v. While they have the same magnitude, they are not going the same direction. And so we could not say that vector u, we would say that it's not equivalent to vector v. Because they have, even though they, they seem to have the same magnitude, they're going a different direction. So that it's really important that they go in the same length and they have the same direction. All right, so some common vectors, and you see this in physics often, is dip displacement. And displacement is an object moves a certain distance in a certain direction. And that's, and that's different than um, for example, for example, you live here. And this is your friend's house here, okay? And so you go two blocks to the south, and then you go uh, three blocks to the to the east, okay? So you've traveled five blocks, right? That you're traveling five blocks, but your displacement is this vector right here. How far have you displaced yourself? You went from this point to this point. And so in order to find your displacement, you would say that you, you would have to use your Pythagorean theorem or your distance formula to figure out what is your vector's magnitude. And then you could also say that you went down and to the right. Okay, so, so your displacement examples could be 20 yards or 20 blocks to the, no, we would say five blocks, right? No, because we, we would have to get this value here. So that would be the square root of 13. So let's actually do some math here. 2 squared plus 3 squared. So 4 plus 9 squared of 9, that's the square root of 13. So in this case, our displacement would be 13, square root of 13 blocks um, south and then, um, no, yes, yeah, south and east. And, and we would have to put the angle here to, to determine that actual measure here. So I'm going to put theta to the southeast because I don't know. Actually, I'll do this. Let me clean that up. Let me get that clear. We would go 13 blocks south and then theta, whatever that measure is, east. And that would be this measure right here. So that's displacement. Okay. Uh, velocity is an object that travels a certain speed. So miles per hour, kilometers per second in a certain direction. So you have your magnitude and then you have your direction, like um, five meters per second up. This is a velocity, okay? Force is a push or pull exerted on an object in a certain direction, okay? So I could say it takes 200 pounds of force to lift up. So here's your magnitude and then there is your direction. So there's that example there and there's other examples of course of force. But there you go. All right, so now that we have that, 
The formulas you need are the distance between points, right? So distance is equal to, and we're going to put an absolute value of that. So magnitude of the, um, the vector would be the distance between um, x sub 1 minus x sub 2 squared plus y sub 1 minus y sub 2 squared. Or you could use the Pythagorean theorem, right? So you could do the absolute value of vector AB would be a squared plus b squared, and then we would have to square that vector as well. So you could use the Pythagorean theorem, and then your slope, of course. Remember, slope of a line segment is just um, is change in y over change in x. Okay, so up to you how you want to use those. I am one that tends to just like sketch it out and draw a right triangle and do the Pythagorean theorem and then count my slope, but we'll do the math that goes with this problem. So you're going to have some problems today where you're going to have to define some values or some terms, and then you're going to have to prove whether or not vectors are equivalent. Now remember, equivalent vectors have to have the same direction and the same magnitude in order to be equivalent. All right, so we are going to we have vectors u, vector or, and vector w, shown at the right. And we're going to show that they're equivalent. Okay, so we'll start with u. Okay, so here's vector u. So we're going to say, okay, so the magnitude of vector u is equal to the square root. All right, so um, we're going to just look at vector u, and I'm going to go from here to here. So that would be 2 minus negative 1 quantity squared plus, and then I'm going to go from here to here. So 4 minus 3 quantity squared. So I'm using the distance formula here. So that would be 3 squared plus 1 squared. And I always do that. And I think I'm just going to say the solution or the magnitude of vector u is the square root of 10 units. So that's the magnitude of vector u. Now it's direction. So we're going to do the slope of vector u is... And remember that you start with the initial point and you go to the terminal point. So I'm going to start here. Let me change that again. Clean that up. All right, so I'm going to start here and my change in y. And you can see that it's dropping. So we're going 4 minus 3. And then we're going to do our run here, our change in x. So we're going from 2 minus negative 1. So that's a down one, and then left three. And so the direction of this is down one and left three. So the so vector u has a magnitude of the square root of 10, and it's got a direction down one, left three. Okay, then we'll do a vector or. All right. And so we'll use the distance formula again. So remember, we're starting at O and we're going to R and we're going to, sub we're going to subtract our X's here. So 0 minus negative 3 quantity squared. And now we're going to subtract our Y's. So 0 minus negative 1, 0 minus negative 1 squared. All right. And so the magnitude of vector OR is, let's see, that's 3 squared. So that's 3 squared plus one squared. Wow, that let me zoom in a little bit better. That looks terrible. So that's uh, square root of 10. All right. So vector u and vector or have the same magnitude, but do they have the same direction? So let's find the slope of vector or. So again, slope. We're looking at uh, rise over run, so change in y over change in x. So our change in y, we're going down from 0 to negative 1. So 0 minus negative 1, which is 1. And then um, we're doing our, as our, our run, so we're going from 0 to negative 3. So 0 minus negative 3. And so that's change of three. So you can see their slopes are the same and their directions are the same because we did go down one 
and to the left three. And how do I know it's down and left, by the way? If you just look at this vector right here, look what it's doing. From its initial point to its terminal point, it's going down and to the left. Okay, so we can say definite with, with definite proof here that uh, vector u and vector or are equivalent. So you go ahead and find the uh, magnitude and direction of vector w. And then we'll finish up, write our final statement. Okay, and so what I'm seeing here again is a vector that is dropping down one and going to the left three. And so we are now going to make um, our, our final statement. So we've shown that they are um, equivalent through our math, and so we'll write a final statement here that says, uh, therefore, or thus, um, vector u, vector or, and vector w. And again, I'm putting the little vector symbols about the u and w because I'm not uh, making them bold face. We could say they are equivalent because uh, they have the same magnitude. So they have the same magnitude of square root of 10 base units, whatever those units are. In this case, we weren't given a unit, so we'll just call it the base unit. And um, the same direction of down one and the left. And there you go. So you have an assignment on Canvas to work on. Don't forget, I won't give you the grade until unless you up load your work or you make a video explaining how you solve one of the problems. So make sure that you do that. All right. Have a great day.